So what is dynamic electrochemistry? So if we uh, go back, if we go back to this uh, diagram to classify the electrochemical techniques. So uh, this is the bulk technique and interfacial technique. And we already talked about the potentiometry, which is the static technique. But today we're gonna focus on the dynamic technique, which is electrochemical techniques that have the current flows in the cell. And dynamic techniques uh, can be control potential or constant current techniques, which uh, I think you're gonna see uh, these uh, four techniques amperometry, voltammetry, coulombmetry, and electrogravimetry. And we're gonna learn about uh, these four techniques uh, later, all right? So uh, I try to center the idea around the Nernst equation. So uh, from the last, uh, last chapter, which is potentiometry or the galvanic cell in general, we know that the concentration of the oxidized species and radio species or OMR affect the electrode potential, like this equation. You can see that if we change O or R, then uh, that's gonna change the E, which is the electrode potential. Or if it's membrane potential, then although the membrane, elect uh, the ion selective membrane electrode does not operate according to the Nernst equation, but the mathematics is the same, the numerical uh, form is the same, so, we can say that uh, we can measure the E cell and then we can uh, calculate back to the concentration of the analyzed layer. So that's the potentiometry. But for dynamic electrochemistry, we're gonna do the opposite way, which is we're gonna control the potential here. We're gonna apply or control the potential here to change the concentration of the oxidized uh, form or oxidized species or reduced form or the reduced species. And if we can change the E, then we can change the O and R subsequently. So that's the central idea of the dynamic electrochemistry that we can control the electrode potential to affect the concentration of the O and R. All right, and that's uh, the important idea. <clears throat> and yeah, in in order to do the dynamic electrochemistry technique, the R and R, I mean the redox copper form, must be electroactive. Or we can say that R and R must be electroactive species, which means that uh, these two species must be able to be electrochemically reduced or oxidized. There are some uh, compound, there are some chemical species that you cannot do this, like you cannot apply the potential and oxidize or reduce it. So those are not the electroactive species because of they don't have maybe they don't have the appropriate functional group to do this uh, to do it in this way. Like uh, let's say glucose, uh, glucose we cannot apply the oxidize uh, apply the potential to oxidize or reduce it. So uh, we cannot perform the direct uh, glucose detection. We have to convert it to hydrogen peroxide. Uh, we're gonna talk about this uh, later. Uh, Instead, uh, if you have to, if you want to oxidize or reduce a dose inactive species, then you need to put the uh, oxidizing or reducing agent like you, you learn in the organic chemistry. But uh, if you want to do the dynamic electrochemistry, then your uh, species must be electroactive. But uh, you don't have to learn, you don't have to know like what is, uh, what, which, what kind of structure is electroactive or not. That's uh, out of our scope. All right. And again, there are two ways to apply, to control the to control the potential or to drive the reaction or to reduce or oxidize the electroactive species. One way is to control the potential directly by applying potential, which here you can do amperometry, voltammetry, and even electrogravimetry and coulombmetry. You can do this, or the second way you can just apply some constant current and hope that your current gonna match the appropriate potential to oxidize or reduce the appropriate form. And usually electrogravimetry and coulombmetry will fall into this uh, category, the applying uh, constant current. So that's why the diagram seems to be like that. So now the question is, what is the number or the value of the potential that 
you should apply in order to drive the oxidation or reduction. Uh, it turns out that you can you, you can still use the Nernst equation to predict the concentration of O and R, the oxidized form and reduced form, at the electrode surface. Only this, only at the surface. But I'm gonna tell you later that this is not like a correct uh, accurate. So. Uh, this is why we have this example 3.1 and uh, this example just want to show you the effect of the applied potential on the uh, redox reaction of the species so let's see so this example uh say that you have an electrolytic cell which construct with the silver silver chloride electrode on the left and platinum electrode in a mixture of the iron three iron three redox copper in one mole hydrochloric on the right hand side so with that you apply the constant potential to it so the question asks to determine which species will dominate in this half cell if the platinum electrode potential is controlled to be uh, a one uh, plus one volt and b zero volt <clears throat> So uh, to do this question, we're just gonna have to write the Nernst equation again. So we have uh, this redox copper, right? The iron three, iron two, which if you, you can write the half reaction or you can just go to the standard electrode potential table and copy the equation. So if you, if you open the table, you have this, right? The iron three and iron two uh, half reaction. So with this, we can write the Nernst equation of this uh, half reaction, which is E is equal to uh, standard potential or formal potential minus 0. 0.0592 over N uh, log Q. Now, here's the question. What should be the number here? What should be the standard or formal potential? Because now we can, you can say that uh, in general, we use the standard electrode potential right 0 0.771 but now this scenario gives you that this redox couple is in one molar hydrochloric so if it tells you this you have to go and find the formal potential instead so all the formal potential is going to be on in, in this column so here you have yeah this one right this the formal potential of this half reaction is 0 0.700 0 volt in one molar hydrochloric. But if we change the, the medium to be like other acid, you have to share the number as well. But uh, this problem, we, we use uh, one molar hydrochloric. So the E0 here is going to be 0.7. So it's going to be 0.7. And N here from the half reaction, you can see that this is the one electron process. So this is 0 0.0592 over one. And a lock uh, iron two plus over iron three, right? Hmm. Now, how to use this Nernst equation? So we want to determine which species dominate, right? So it, uh, basically, we want to determine the ratio, the ratio of the iron two to iron three. If this ratio is uh, very high, then we can say that the iron two species is dominant. But if this ratio is very low, very low, it means that the iron three uh, dominates the half cell. So we're gonna keep uh, this, and we're gonna rearrange the equation, and you can see the math later. But basically, we're gonna get something like log uh, Fe two over Fe three equal to uh, 0 0.700 minus E. What else? Uh, divided by 0 0.0592. And so, let me change the ink. And so, if we want to just calculate this term, it's going to be iron 2 over iron 3. Uh, you put the entire lock so it's going to be 10 to this term right <clears throat> so you're gonna plug the e in this expression 
but here's the problem. So what should be the E? Because uh, this one volt and zero volt is the value versus silver, silver chloride. It's the value versus silver, silver chloride. But every time that you want to use Nernst equation, it should be it should be against the Xi electrode. So it should be the Xi electrode. So uh, the first step is to write the Nernst equation, right? The second step is you find the E electrode potential versus Xi. So let's do the A first. So now we know that uh, from A, the electrode potential is one volt versus silver, silver chloride, which basically means that E minus E silver, silver chloride is uh, one volt, right? And then this number is what? Uh, point one. 0 0.199, if I remember correctly. So E is equal to one, this number. But I'm gonna route it to like 1.2 volt for easy, simplicity. So now you can see that the one volt versus silver, silver chloride is 1.2 volt actually versus uh, Xi electrode. So here you just plug uh, 1.2 into this expression. So it's gonna be iron two plus versus iron three plus is equal to 10 to the 0 0.7 minus uh, 1.2 over 0.0592. And you're gonna get something like 3.58 multiplied 10 to the minus nine. So what does it mean? What does it mean? So this threshold, the concentration of the iron two to the concentration of iron three is 3.6, 10 to the minus nine. So which uh, species dominate the reaction? Is it iron two or iron, iron three? Yeah, so iron, iron three is higher. So you can summarize that uh, iron three dominate the cell, dominate the surface. <clears throat> and you notice that one uh, plus one is higher than uh, point seven. So this is A. What about B? If B, we can do the same thing. So let me uh, go back, go to the next uh, space. So for B, you can do the same thing. So you find the electrode versus she electrode first. So it's gonna be E minus still still chloride called to zero, right? But so E is now going to be point, uh, zero plus uh, point nine nine. So you get something like point two volt. And then you plug in, plug, plug this number in the same expression. So this is going to be iron two over iron three is equal to 10 to the point seven minus point two over 0 0.0592 and you're gonna get 2.79 10 to the x i think yeah so if the electrode potential of this uh, platinum electrode is zero volt versus silver silver chloride or 0 0.2 volt uh, versus she electrode then this concentration ratio is going to be 10 to the x which means that uh, we which species is higher in concentration? Which one? Fe2 plus, right? Yeah, exactly. So from these two examples, we can see, we, we saw, we have seen that we can use the next equation uh, to predict the concentration of the species at the given applied potential. So that's uh, the summary. So, uh, I hope that you can some you can see that uh, in general, yeah. From that's the math way, but here in general we can say that if the applied potential is higher than the formal potential or standard electrode potential, then you will get more oxidation, and it turns out that you're gonna have more oxidized species than the radio species. In contrast, if your electrode potential is lower than the formal electrode potential or standard electrode potential, 
at a given condition, then you're going to have a lot of reductions going on. And at the end, you will get uh, the concentration of reduced species higher than the oxidized uh, species. And this can be proved by the Nancy equation as we showed. And uh, from now, we're going to call this like endemic chemistry because we can control E here. We can call this applied potential. So any question here? Okay, so uh, this is the how to use the next equation to predict the concentration. But what you can actually predict here, you can actually predict, let's uh, consider the redox reaction for a second. So in dynamic, uh, in, re in the review video that I posted uh, at the beginning of the month, I think I talked about this, that uh, the redox reaction and actually can occur in two ways. The first way you mix uh, the species together, you mix the oxidant and the reductant together and you will get the product. So that's the direct electron transfer. But in the second way, you construct the electrochemical cells and then you let the reaction occur for the galvanic cell or you apply the potential or external in voltage in the electrolytic cell. But the difference is that in the electrochemical cell, the redox reaction can occur at only the surface of the electrode. So consider this one. So this is the diagram. Let's see, this is the electrode, the gray, the gray area here is, is electrode. And this blue may be your solution. And then you put the electrode in the solution. And this is the surface, which uh, tells you that the, the redox reaction can occur at the electrode surface, which means that uh, the concentration thing that you that we have been predict that we have been predicting is accurate only at the surface. This uh, this calculation is accurate at uh, only the surface of the electrode. This prediction using the Nernst equation is good uh, is good in general, but you can accurately predict the number only at the surface. Other than that, you cannot really predict because a lot of things is uh, going on, which we can uh, explain in the next uh, slide, right? But the surface concentration is thing, the things that you can uh, uh, really predict. But even so, you, uh, this, uh, this uh, comparison is still accurate that the, apply, the higher applied potential will give you more oxidation, but the lower reduction, uh, lower applied potential will give you more reduction. Yeah. There are many ways to explain this. Actually, uh, sometimes we can use molecular orbital theory, but I think since we have used a lot of Nernst equations, so that's why I should explain you with the Nernst uh, equation. <laughs>